Ready, F8? Do it. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Hawker Podcast from Knox City, Texas. I am Jeff Stanfield. Hi, me. I'm Andy Shaver. I'll do my own introduction, Jeff. You've done enough today. The world-famous Andy Shaver. Mm -hmm. uh, Join with us today, Mr. Ted Wells from the beautiful state of Montana. How are you, bud? Good. How are you doing? guys? Awesome. We are doing awesome. Good. It's going to be hotter than Satan's nutsack here in the next couple of days. Uh, <laughs> it, it, summertime is here. You know, it hadn't been that bad, though. It's been in the 80s and rainy and it... All in all, it hadn't been a bad summer, but 108 on Friday. 108 Friday now? Woof. Yes, it is. So. Thank God I'm going to be in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, we're going to – we're headed up to uh, Squad Fest, so that's where we'll be. I don't know if it's going to be much warmer or cooler there, but it's got to be better than 108. What's, what's the weather like in Montana right now? It's going to make you jealous right now. Uh, right now it's 65 and sunny. You had snow, like, not long ago, right? Yeah, like two weeks that's ago. That's insane. No shit. <laughs> Is that, unu is that unusual? Have, uh, no, not for this time of year. We had a 48-hour period. We had I had six inches of wet snow in my yard. The next day it was 78 degrees. <laughs> wow. It's just stupid. Cause I, it was a Because I saw, uh, <clears throat> I guess, first and last day of school pictures for your kids, and it was snowing in August, and it was snowing in May. Yeah. Well, hold on. It snowed in August it, also? It was snowing on the first day of school. Insane. And then it was snowing on the last day of school for my son, yeah. My daughter's still in school. She has two days left. She's on her she, – they got her big-ass sprinkler party today, so she's pretty stoked. And it's going to be 72 degrees. I can't believe they're going Freeze to – Freeze the fucking death. Our kids have been out of school a month here. <laughs> I can't believe you're still in school. Yeah. Yeah, why do they go so late? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Liberals. That's the way they do it. Y'all start school in August and get out in fucking June. That's – that's. Yeah. We, well, our kids are out of school May, what, 9th, 18th? 18th. It seemed yeah. like it was earlier than that. No. About 20th, I think, 23rd or something. And this year it's two weeks longer because of COVID, I guess. I have no idea. Did y'all get canceled for COVID? Did y'all did the school get shut down at any point? Uh, no, it didn't. <clears throat> we all got it. So my daughter, we were all out for two weeks or whatever. And then she got quarantined another time because of a close contact or however that shit works. But um, no, they're full time. Do you know anybody that's had COVID two different times? No. I don't either. When did you get it? Uh, -uh. Uh, we got it. Shit, month and a half ago, two months ago. Oh, so oh just wow. recently. Yeah, my wife got it first, and she was real sick. Um, <laughs> it was kind of scary because she's. Uh, I guess it was. It was probably twelve weeks ago. We'll call it now because she's pregnant. Oh, congratulations! Oh. Having another congratulations, bullet. man. Hell yeah. Um, so it was early, she was real early pregnant and then she got sick, which was kind of scary. And she's a labor and delivery nurse. So she's, <clears throat> she's well versed in the early term pregnancy and COVID and all this stuff, you know, all the training and, um, you know, it was scary for her and she got pretty sick for about four days and we had two choices. We could quarantine her in a room for 10 days and just no contact. And I would take care of the kids and get them to school and do their, you know, do our thing, which I mean, to me, it's like, that doesn't work <laughs> with the family, you know? And so we decided to just roll with it and um, we all ended up getting it. I was sick for about, I felt like shit for about six hours. Um, my son had a runny nose. He tested positive. I tested positive. My daughter tested positive. She was totally normal. Um, then my wife, yeah, she, about four days, she felt like shit and then she felt better. And I mean, it was, it was six weird. hours for you. Yeah. I went to bed one night. It was like the third night in of my wife being sick and I laid down and I felt like shit like hot body hurt and I fell asleep and I woke up the next morning and I was like okay well, we're good it's crazy it's that's, such a weird no. it is weird because virus. It, and it and it that's just what's so crazy about it is because it affects everybody differently like we had it in December January right <laughs> around there you know nothing uh, we lost our taste and smell and that's it. So I'm wondering if there's like yeah. different strains or different varieties or, or something. Like no, it, no it just nobody around us got sick. Like no. no no symptom other than I was tired. I was just fucking tired, tired, yeah. and the the smell and the taste. And I still don't have my taste is still not normal. It's fucked up still. But that's it. Yeah. 
I, I, yeah, my smell was like weird. Like I would smell like lemon, mm. like a lemony zest type shit for like three, four days. And it was super weird. And then my taste was not gone, but off for a little bit, a couple days. And then like my neighbor Tanner, he's one of my best buddies. This was right here in the road. And he, he got it and he cannot eat a steak still. He said, it just tastes like it's got shit. a moldy taste to it. See, I, I, yeah, that's exactly what he's, and it's still too, he had it like six months yeah, ago. Yeah, that's what I'm going through the same stuff. My toothpaste is that way, and I've noticed meats. Well, I'm that way with, I'm still that yeah. way with dairy. Any dairy product, anything, cheese, milk, creamer. Um, I even had potato chips just a couple days ago that have like a cheddar taste to them. I'm sure it's not even fucking real mm-hmm. cheddar, but it tastes sour. It's not good. It's so, But weird, none dude. of us got sick. No fever, oh. no runny nose, nothing. Oh, my son got a runny nose, and he's like, Dad, I feel fine. Why do we have to sit in the house for 10 days? I'm like, well, I fuck, I don't know. <laughs> like, That's the hardest part for me is like, you tell me I have to sit in my house for 10 days? No. We, I, we, we, I uh, we also took Ivamec. I did not. You didn't take Ivamec? We oh, did. No. I started feeling like crap one day. I took Ivamec, and four hours later, I was better. And now we're finding out uh, that they're telling us that Ivamec and that uh, hydrochloroquine. hydrochloroquine would kill this stuff. You know? It's a shame yeah. all those people had to die when they knew what would fix it, but the they, they, they kept it from – I don't want to get into politics. It's just a fucked up deal. Yeah, I read a lot of shit, and that just makes a guy wonder. Yeah. Kind of Thank wild. goodness Fauci's emails came out. Now we know what we're really fighting with. Little bastard. So what, what do you got going on right now taking pictures of? What are we doing? Uh, right, now, uh, right now I'm doing work for a veteran organization uh, called the Commit Foundation. This is uh, my neighbor who lives right across the alley here. She's she's a badass. Her name's Anne Marie Craig. She started this Veteran Transition Foundation to transfer transition high level veterans out of the service into jobs. So what do, what kind um, of jobs do they try to place them in? Um, like high level leadership stuff, CEO, COO type stuff. I mean, these are like Delta Force, SEAL Team Six, SEAL Team guys, like not your average folks. And guys that have been like long tenured, like twenty plus years in the teams. Um, so it's really fascinating. You get to hang out with a lot of really cool people, like way cooler <laughs> than us. Um, and so it's cool. Today's like simple. I just got to do some new headshots for the website. So, um, but yeah, yesterday we went out to the Working Dog Ranch, and we talked about that before. Those fallen working dogs, and did a big tour and bite work demonstration out there yesterday morning, and photographed that. And so yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm I'm on dog time right now. It's. How many of those little land sharks do you have now? Oh, gosh, there's – we just had a brand-new litter about a week ago, so there's probably 60 of them on wow. the ground now. And are you – do you have any in your house right now? Uh, no, I just took – I had a little a 12-month-old, uh, one-year-old girl named Calypso yesterday. I just took her back to the ranch. She was getting drained up, so – uh, I do not have one right now. Do you fit? Do you like it better when you have one of those? I mean, you got to feel a little bit safer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel safe no matter what. I mean, I got a ton of guns <laughs> and shit, but yeah, they're uh, they're really fascinating animals, and we've talked about that before. And they're just cool, man. Like it, it's like somebody's got your six all the time, and somebody's always watching. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. I just can't imagine cycling through dogs like that because about the time I'd get attached to a little bastard, it'd be a way No, that's the hard part, man. You start to love one, and you got to take it back to the ranch. Yeah. You're like, shit, that one was nice. I like that one. You know, you got kids. So, it's fun to eat them all. The fascinating part is they're like they're like humans, man. They all have such different personalities. Oh, yeah. And so, like, learning what they, what they like and don't like and kind of where they want to be and how they operate is – to me, that's my favorite part of having multiple dogs. And I've had like 30 or 40 different dogs probably in the house in the last year. Damn. Do, I'd get too attached. How long do you, well, how long do you keep one usually? Uh, it depends. Um, like if one's sold, I'll take it. Like before it, it flies to its owner, I'll take it for like a week and just have it around the kids and let them tug on its ears and try to piss it off and kind of just touch them up. And then, um, you know, I'll have one for like a night. Go grab one. The owner lives like 300 yards away, so she always has dogs in her house. So I'll go grab one and take it to the park, walk it, whatever. Um, how was your waterfowl season this year? Um, it was ups and downs. Um, here in Bozeman, it was a lot of competition more than ever. Why? 
college really? kids. That's everywhere. That's the common theme. Anywhere it's got a college, what's fucking up your waterfowl? College kids. Yeah, they don't fuck it up per se. It's just like, and and with COVID too, the, the little bastards didn't have to go to class, <laughs> so they were out all day long scouting, <laughs> locking up shit all week. And by the time normal working folks like, you know, me and my buddy Kevin and Brady Davis and McCormick and all the boys can get out and hunt on the weekend because we got to work. Shit's all tied up. So you're like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. You know, I mean, they've got permission to six fields and they hunt one of them. See, but that's going to bite them in the ass eventually. Like you can't keep. Oh, it, it's, yeah. It's bit them in the ass already. Yeah. Like For you sure. can't promise these people you're going to be out there and then them drive by and them not, not be there. Yeah. And I think some of the landowners that we've been hunting on for, you know, six years, five, six years now are starting to like, you know, realize that this shit's going on and relationships with landowners, as you guys know, that's the biggest part. You know, you go work for them in the summer and bring them a bottle of bourbon unexpectedly. They love that shit. Um, so they, yeah, they're okay. Now what college is it in Bozeman? Montana Montana State. State. Absolutely. Probably the, as pretty a town as there is anywhere in America. Bozeman is a beautiful place, and I'm assuming you're getting a lot of. Uh, are y'all getting a lot of Californians moving there too? Are they yep. anti-hunter? Most of them. Uh, I mean, probably. I don't know. I don't talk to. <laughs> well, them. I was wondering if they're buying up parcels of land, though. Is, oh, for sure, they're buying land. Yeah, and, absolutely. But you know, most of the agricultural stuff around here has been owned for so long that. I don't think we're losing like hunting opportunity per se. I think the Californians are buying ranches and stuff in the mountains. I don't think they don't want cornfields and right. stuff that, like that. I can see where that's true too. I've never seen, I've never been anywhere that had, that I saw as many elk as I did around Bozeman too. I, I don't, Oh yeah. I, I, I can't imagine anywhere in the United States that has a higher density population of elk than Bozeman does. I think there's a couple big herds around here. I think this kind of whole area, this whole 300 mile circle you could draw around here is pretty full. Yeah, we, of them. we drove in from, I went into Yellowstone through West Yellowstone, I believe, and I came out at, is it Mammoth Springs? Yep. And I come out yep. that way. So I went in two different ways, and I never seen so many freaking elk in my entire life, morning and afternoon. Gosh almighty. What a cool place to live. Yeah, there's a herd that lives in Mammoth that's pretty cool. Now, do you go after elk ever? There's, uh, I don't. I, uh, I've photographed a few elk hunts, um, but, man, my August and September is just kind of gearing up. I do the Texas Steel stuff for Quack Rack in September, which kind of eats up some time. And uh, It sounds like this year we're going to go out to New York for early goose, I'm jealous. which will be fun. I put. Uh, I've never even been to New York. I have no idea. I'm jealous. I put New York on the on one of my top uh, top states to visit list just because just for the early season. Where Where are you flying into? You flying into Buffalo or to Albany or Syracuse? Uh, Syracuse. Well, that's, a, that's a beautiful place there too. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I've never. I've literally never been on the East Coast, the Upper East Coast at my all. My favorite ever. place in America is the East Coast. Um, the New York City. I like New York City. But upstate New York is, is, is a very cool place. I mean, it's completely different than New York City. And like-minded mm -hmm. people just like us. That's, you're going to have a good time up there. That, like I said, that's Andy's dream place to go. 15 honkers, right? Yeah, why don't you guys come with September, us? September, we can't get away. Yeah, we're, our, we, we're, we're, busy. we're as busy during dove season here in the first six weeks, which yeah. is September through the first two weeks of November, I mean October, as we are yep. during waterfowl season. I mean, we are swamped, or, yeah. we could, or we would love to do that. Fuck yeah. I'm Get gonna, out of the Texas heat, because it's always hot as shit in September. I'm going to go in October to Wisconsin and film a hunt and do some hunting up there, and I would like to go to Montana. I've been invited to come to Montana in October to hunt, and I would like to do that if we can. But I also got to take yeah. my wife to Salem in October. You're better off waiting to come here I can't December. do that. We're too busy here. All, all the yeah. good times, we can't get away. Yes, really you guys need to figure I your shit out. I you. thought I did a long time ago when I started this business <laughs> and got it so busy. I didn't realize it was going to cut into all my fun yeah. time. All right. 
Well, we should get you guys on a quack rack trip. That'd yeah, be fun. that's in South Texas, isn't it? Ah, we, we travel all over. Uh, we went to Salt Plains twice. Salt Plains Outfitters in Kansas twice last year. That was that place. When did you beautiful. go there? Uh, gosh, first trip was right in the middle of November. Second trip was right before Christmas. Now, when you when you're going down to do the teal hunt, y'all are hunting on the coast, correct? Uh, no, we're well, in El Campo. Co- we call that the coast. That's what I meant. That that area down there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it is wet down yeah. there, and I saw where there's a hurricane, chance, chance of having a hurricane coming up in the next 10 days down there. Then they don't need any more water down there. Yeah. yeah. That'll be good for the teal, though. Yeah. It's a fun place down there. Was, I finally figured out the mosquito. How would you year. do? I got a secret weapon. What is it? Let us know. I can't. I can't talk about it yet. Some clothing. Oh, you got some clothing on? Oh, 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 oh. We, we are inundated with fucking gnats now. We have never had a gnat problem ever that I can remember. But we've had a ton of rain lately, uh, and we've got gnats like crazy right now. It's ridiculous. Huh. We have no bugs out here. There's not a bug now, in the sky. Now, do you have bugs during, like, the summertime and shit, or is it just never? Uh, like, in the neighborhood, not really. I mean, you got fishing on the river and stuff. You got skeeters and stuff, but it's not nothing to. I mean, I don't wear bug spray. That's crazy. Right here, they're fucking everywhere. Yeah. You go outside for like two seconds. I went out to check the mail yesterday, and I almost got sucked uh, court low by the time I walked back in the house. So there's clothing <laughs> coming out that's going to be a mosquito repellent, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's got, it's pretty that cool is. technology. That is badass. Oh. It is. I don't know when it's coming. Maybe 2023. Oh, so it's not even. It's not even going to be this year. Well, it's son of a bitch. I was looking forward to, like, buying it for this teal season. I can't speak to it. I don't know. I'm just – I'm product okay. testing. If you say it works, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll take – Well, I'll tell you. Uh, so I've done that Texas teal trip for three years now. Uh, the first two years, I literally about <laughs> died. Um, so I have – I've done a bunch of research, um, worked with – the, the team at Sitka on why I get eaten so bad. Um, we've come down to a couple conclusions. Uh, o positive blood they really okay. like apparently. Um, you're sweating a lot and you're drinking a lot of beer. Yeah. And so, and that's a real thing apparently. And so, um, the last two years I came home with, I mean, full underside of my arms, totally destroyed inside of my thighs because you're I'm wearing those. I was wearing those Sitka Al- the super light pants and the light hoodie, and it would, they just bite right through it. And I would come home, and I would literally be sick for a week, like just trying to recover from all these mosquito bites. And it didn't matter what I did, 100% deep, the stupid-looking-ass wristbands you put around your things. I mean, I was hanging them from the back of my hat. Like, I looked like a total idiot. And I was doing everything I possibly could to not <laughs> it looked like get Jody alive. Dude, I mean, it was insane. And so this year I went down with the secret weapon, and I came home with one mosquito bite on my wrist, and I did not wear bug that spray. Is, that's insane. Now, I would fucking mow in that. I would do everything in that. I just read yesterday or the day before that there's a new breed of mosquitoes that's coming somewhere out of fucking Central America or somewhere. China? That can No, that can bite through two inches of clothing. Hmm. They got fucking Eat. some bitches can stand flat foot, footed and fuck a turkey. I Great. guess that's just what that's that's but, just what we need. But they they can bite through two inches of fucking clothing now. It's a brand new 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 strain of mosquito. So we got some super mosquito. Thanks a lot, Biden. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say who, who built yeah. that some bitch. But <laughs> it, it's crazy because that where you're at must be. I've never had mosquito infestation like that at all. We have them here, but as soon as it dries up, we don't have them no more. Right. This Fourth of July is going to be fucking yeah. miserable here with fire with uh, mosquitoes. Yes, and we haven't had them until just recently, but they're horrible. That old saying: if we get a hard freeze, we'll get rid of all the fucking bugs. It damn sure didn't wipe out the fucking mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. Well, they're <laughs> bad in they're bad in Alaska during the summer. Oh, they're terrible. So, in Alaska. so I'm. What yeah, do they do? They burrow underground. I don't know. No, that's the Alaska State bird. <laughs> you didn't know that. They're not bad. They're not bad in Montana, though. That's insane. Uh-uh. That's crazy. I figured it would be anywhere up there was would be that way. Do y'all have flies real bad there? Uh, someplace like, uh, someplace like 
you go kind of higher mountain lakes and stuff, there'll be bad horse flies. Oh, them fuckers are horrible. Those will be. Uh, oh, they're awful. They fucking back. God, I'm not make you want to slap the shit out of somebody. <laughs> Are, uh, yeah. are yeah, you guys bad. dry like the Dakotas are? Uh, no, I'd say we're just about right. Because they're normal. saying like right now, South Dakota and North Dakota is just a desert almost. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. They need rain bad. Um, I guess it was Flatland Flyways. They shared a post. and I mean, it's like an aerial shot, and there's no water around. It's going to be... Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what the birds do. There's no water for them to stop on. Well, they'll adapt like they always do, I'm sure. Yeah, but it'll just be interesting to see if, if you guys will get more or if they'll go east or if they'll just hop down south a little bit quicker. Yeah, well, I mean, they'd be a lot smarter to just come yeah. towards me. Yeah, work out a whole lot better, right? <laughs> So, so is early season, is it just kind of hit or miss? You said December's the best, your best bet in Montana. Is early season just kind of dependent on the uh, weather? Yeah, it's generally good. Like in, we open October 1st ish within a couple of days of October 1st. And we usually have a few really good shoots early and then, um, just depends on the weather. Yeah. But I mean, it's my favorite thing to shoot geese in the snow, so maybe I'm biased. I don't know. Well, you posted a picture on your Instagram. Uh, I guess it finally got what was winter kind of delayed for you guys. Yeah, it was nice on the opener, and then then it got cold, and then it got real cold for like two days, and then it warmed up again, and then it snowed again. I mean, it was just weird, ups and downs, fifty degree temperature swings for. A month now will you guys ever lose birds or are you just kind of chasing chasing the same ones yeah i don't think we lose like the mass quantity of them but they definitely move out of the valley then they seems like when you get another cold snap i don't know if they reverse migrate or if they're coming down more from the north i don't know exactly where they're coming from but um it seems like if you can get that good like 10 degree three days of 10 degrees when it's been 40 it's pretty noticeable difference just in the way that they act or what yeah just numbers and decoying them now do you do you use an a-frame or do you uh like use pits or layouts or what do you get try to like hide in um no pits up here i mean there's a few landowners that have them but those are pretty locked up private type deals um but just Mainly a frames on field edges. So at least you're a little bit warmer. You can get a you can get a heater buddy or something in there and oh, yeah. save them. Yeah, we don't get cold. Mm. We're good. I would get cold. I would get <laughs> real cold. You're looking fucking jacked. You're doing. You're staying on top of your your workouts. The old mountain tough every Jeez. day, bud. I'm getting back in shape. Now I did the last time we talked. I I was trying to figure out how to stay in shape during hunting season. I didn't work out a single fucking day. February I kicked it on and now we're in june and i'm finally starting to see results getting old is a bitch i figured out you don't lose anything you don't gain anything it takes a lot of time yeah it does that was my that was my commitment to myself this waterfowl season is to not gain 20 pounds of gas station <laughs> shit did you did you hit your goal i did i worked out average four days a week in the lab and i stayed right there <laughs> And then I uh, I did that 75 hard Andrew Frisella's challenge. I, I was over about a month ago. I finished it. I made it six days um, in that challenge. <laughs> did you? I committed to it hard, and, and I did it right. Two workouts a day. I did either two mountain tough workouts a day, which was crazy. Um, either that or I'd do like a Peloton run and one mountain tough workout a day, and I never missed, never fucked up. Did not have a drop, drop of alcohol. Did it to the T, and I lost 22 wow. pounds, and it made a big difference. Because they've talked about how it makes, like, a difference in, like, cognitive ability. Were you clear as a bell? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, you wake. So, like, I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but I think I had a pretty solid drinking problem during yeah. COVID. And, you know, it was like... You know, my wife was working. I'd get up. I got into kind of a lazy streak, like drinking and 
drinking during the day and just kind of being a piece of shit really. And I was still working out hard, you know, but like, it just, it was weird, you know, time for me. And, and so I finally got to the point where I was like, I need to make a change right now or I'm, you know, it's not getting, it's not getting any better. And so that's when I started the 75 hard. And, um, man, the community down at Mountain Tough, all the folks you work out with are such awesome people. I mean, we've got retired SEAL team guys. The owner, Dustin Diefenderfer, is a great human. And they all did not think I could do it. And I'm like, well, fuck you guys. They didn't you think know? you could quit. I'm doing this. They didn't think I could do it. Like like the workouts or just no alcohol? What, what part did they not think? No, 75 days of alcohol yeah they didn't think i, I could wonder it that is that's the thing that not many people are talking about is how many people in america like you you know just started this bad got on this bad road of alcohol or drugs or whatever you know shit it can be anything jerking off too much do what oh yeah masturbation is <laughs> way up in covid Jeff. most people knock that shit out when they're 12 that or one 13. that one lady had sex on air Huh? Or wasn't it like a CEO or something? Wasn't he like <laughs> masturbating on a conference call? I think that was fucking, I mean, it was a politician, I think. Either way, masturbation's up during COVID. That was- who was it? <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> it was who? Oh, it was yeah, you. there you go. Masturbating on air, Jeff. Me? Yeah. Um. But it's just, that's what so many, that's what this pandemic is just insane because so many people have just, you know, they got nothing to do all day, so they just fucking turn to drinking. So I, did, I commend you for being able to stop. I did see, or I read, that there was a huge rise in women alcoholics during COVID that would stay home and drink wine all yeah. the time. Really? Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it wasn't, the alcohol part of that wasn't hard for me. It was the, it was the two workouts a day. For whatever reason. Because yeah. one's got to be outside and, you know, it's fucking hot, rainy. But you stuck yeah. with it. And I did it. And I did it for the alcohol part, really. I mean, I work out a lot and, you know, I take pride in being fit and going to be 34 years old pretty soon. And, you know, it's not getting any younger. So, obviously, the fitter you can stay now, the better off you're going to be. I did notice as an unfit person that there's not a lot of fat fucks in Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> No, there's not many. There's, there's not very many, though. I mean, going to Montana looks like going anywhere in America did in the 50s, probably. Everybody's thin and stuff. Uh, everybody's outside. Everybody eats good. I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's easy to stay fit here when you got so many things you can now, do outside. Now, what book did you decide to read? Um, I read through Extreme Ownership Jocko. Um, from Jocko. Um, it's kind of a funny story about that. I... I did a shoot for Mountain Ops um, right before Christmas two years ago. Um, we hunted teal out on the Great Salt Lake. And when I was getting on the plane to fly home, it was the day before. It was the 22nd, so it was the day before my son's birthday. Um, and I cut – well, I kind of – I was like, I need to be home on the 22nd. It's my son's birthday. It's Christmas. Like, I can't stay till the 24th, you know. So I, I, when I was getting on the plane – I sat down in my seat and I looked to my left and it was fucking Jocko sitting next to me. His family was flying up to Big Sky for Christmas. So he had his wife, all his kids, and we just had a great conversation all the way from Salt Lake. He was real cool about it? Um, Like he talked? So cool. Like coolest human ever. He's a retired Navy SEAL. Okay. All right. Black belt in jujitsu like several times, like a fucking gorilla. Yeah. His whole Instagram is his watch he gets up at 4 30 every morning yeah. works out and that's all his instagram is is his watch and like the aftermath of his workout yeah well it's cool because and it, the funny part is i had my i had my extreme ownership book oh, with wow. me and so he signed it for me and we had a good conversation about that and so i literally just read that thing through for 75 days constantly. so you just reread it over and over again it over and over again. And I'm not a reader. I don't sit down and read books. I'd rather like watch a podcast or listen to something. But um, I just thought that was cool that I, you know, got to talk to him. And I mean, he's such a humble human, even though he's an ultimate badass, you know. And um, so, yeah, I just kept plugging into that thing. I think I read it like six I times. To, I need to look at that. Um, 
Is he just a giant of a human being? Like he looks like just a fucking gorilla. Uh, he's not real tall. He's like five eleven probably, but he's goddamn shoulders are like <laughs> bowling balls. How do you he's spell huge? Name? Jocko, J- Jock, and then O, J O C K O. And like, if there was ever a guy that looked like a Navy SEAL, it's Jocko. Yeah, he's like the ultimate just military a, man oh, for sure. Short haircut and just a chiseled chin, and I mean, he's two hundred and fifty pounds. And do not fuck with me. He looks like the. Um, no, yeah. he looks. He's he's a lot more cut. Oh, Brock Lesnar, that big old head on him. And he's got a he's got a melon on him. Have you? Uh, and like, oh, yeah. evidently, like he's talked about his childhood, and like he's just he was born to be a warrior. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So I, I commend you because alcohol is not an easy thing to give up, especially because you like – I've noticed you like to cook meat like I do, and there's nothing better than on a Saturday morning throwing a fucking brisket on or you said you got a pork butt going on and then opening up yeah. a, a nice Coors Light or whatever your beer choice is. And that was my hardest thing, and I think it was like – it wasn't like I had to drink, but it was like a there was some draw, yeah. you know, like – something that would make me want to have a beer or I don't know. It was just kind of weird. And it's not like I was an alcoholic, not even a functioning alcoholic, but I definitely drank way too much beer, you know, and it didn't, I didn't, you know, deduct time for my kids. I didn't hole up in the garage and like pound two beers before I go to bed. It wasn't like that. It was just like I had to just sip on one all the time because I had nothing else to worry about. Like editing photos up on the computer, sip on a beer. Like I just, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I get it. Cause you know, now I'm kind of in my downtime and like you said, like I'll go to edit a podcast and it's just like for open a beer, You're, you know, just yep. unwind for the day. Yep. But I tell you what, mm-hmm. that meat tastes so good when you, when you sit with it all day long and you're just sipping on a couple tall boys. Oh, there's nothing better in the world. I don't, I, I can't give it up. I agree. I agree. And I'm I'm back on the wagon now a little bit. I'm I'll have a beer once in a while, but I'm not gonna have eight or ten a day like I was. Now this uh this this mountain tough that you do is it like CrossFit or what kind of training do you do? Uh, not CrossFit. It's like uh it's kind of its own program. It's built around backcountry hunters, which mm-hmm. I am not one. But um, it's uh, three days a week of high intensity cardio, like teamwork stuff, skier, grower death bike um like for example you'll have a team of four race to a thousand calories with five deadlifts every three minutes and 10 burpees every five minutes and you just kind of bust it out as a team which i really like um and then two days a week are like heavy deadlifts squats we don't do anything overhead um but it's all functional stuff it's great yeah that's that's the important thing because you know for you, you know, you want to use it outdoors. So, like, it needs to make sense, and it needs to kind of fit what you do outside, you know. A bunch of bench press and shit's probably not going to help you out too much. might make you look good in a T-shirt, but you're not going to function any better outside. Yeah. It, for guys like us, it doesn't do us any good. We need to be, you know, functional, unilaterally functional. You know, it's you got to move, and you got to be strong. It's a lot of legs. I mean, my legs have literally never – I've played college football, and my legs are stronger now than they were when I was a senior in college. Hey, it's is crazy it, shit. Is it cool seeing, like – so you and me are about the same age. So you were in college, what, 06 to 10, 11, right around there? So, yeah, 05 to 08, and then master's program to 2010. So 10, a decade ago. Is it amazing to you how yep. fitness has changed just in that decade, like what you thought was revolutionary back then – and like what you're seeing now. Yeah, it's changed a lot. It kind of went from like that, you know, old school iron yeah. barbell mentality of just getting strong and thick and, you know, it didn't matter if you could move or not, but God, look at the size of your biceps type thing, you know, and, and now it's like, you know, functionally fit is a totally different thing. You don't have to be skinny to right. be fit. You know, if you can, you know, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but like there's guys in the gym right now at Mountain Tough that you would look at and be like, that guy's not fit, and that some bitch would run <laughs> circles around you. We need one of those down here, get Jeff enrolled in it. I mean, it's Jeff's a slow <laughs> yeah. pace guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go swim a quarter of a mile today. Does that work? 
I don't know. Is there swimming? Yeah. Swim. Are you going to swim or float? He got a new Okay. He got a new pool. I'll Jeff uh, Jeff recently just had surgery. He got the uh the stomach stapled shut. So I'm trying to get him on a healthy healthy regimen. I eat healthy because I don't get to eat yeah. much anymore, and I've lost no, 70 you pounds. Eat, you eat smaller because you can't eat much. What uh, did you eat yesterday? Um, I had a beef soft taco. I don't know how that's unhealthy. A beef soft taco? Yeah, I had a lot of carbs in, in the tortilla. Well, I had half of one. Okay. And I had... What vegetables did you eat? Um, yesterday I didn't eat any. I usually eat a sweet potato or something every day. I eat, I try to eat veggies all the time. I like healthy food. I like salad. I fucking had lettuce and tomato on the taco. That's fucking vegetables. I had, no. I mean, I didn't eat and I had a piece of grilled chicken yesterday and that's it. <laughs> I don't eat nothing. I mean, I can't eat anything hardly. You know, you can make a salad real unhealthy real quick with a bunch oh, of sauce. Well, it's not. It's that's called a salad. What you're talking about is just eating fucking lettuce. <laughs> that's not a salad. That's lettuce. <laughs> so it depends what you're you're eating. Yes, that's right. You can make a dan- a salad very unhealthy real quick, and that's what makes it taste better. That some bitch tastes good though. But lettuce, tomato. I, I eat a lot of avocados. How did you How did you avoid the gas station junk this this hunting season? That's always my downfall. Um, Ooh. I really just didn't stop there. Honestly, like would take cliff bars and just stuff I could snack on. And that's it. I just didn't go there. When you go there, is when you I buy don't the ever shit, go you know? in the store ever I, for a fat guy. I'm going to be honest with everybody here. I don't go in the stores to buy shit. You make us. you guys get in, but I don't stay. Even if I go by myself, I don't get nothing ever. Oh, right. The only you time fill I up, fill up and go the, Yeah. But when we're scouting, these fucks always go in there and get all kinds of shit. Andy, Mr. In Shape here comes out with Crispitos and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I am I am a slob during hunting season. I will be the first to admit it. And it is something that I, every year, like Ted, I told him last year, I'm going to work on this, and I did not. I did, though, however, I did not have much Red Bull this year. It was only in January that I started drinking Red Bull again. And those are just fucking liquid diabetes. Blake eats healthier than anybody during hunting season. He makes him a salad every night. I watch him. Oh. You need to eat like Blake does. Douses it in ranch dressing. Thousand Island is even better. Mm. So, but, so Ted, when I was in Yellowstone, yeah. you told me where to go find a grizzly bear. Yeah. I didn't find a grizzly bear. Yeah. Them fuckers ain't just... When you go to Yellowstone, I, I, th- I guess I thought I was going to a zoo and every corner I was going to come around was going to have some kind of game there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of a... Yeah, kind of a wild dude the, down the, there. I didn't see all that kind of stuff. The first quarter of a mile in, all these cars are stopped. I'm like, oh, shit, good, there's something there. <laughs> and there was a b- big, big-ass buffalo yeah. and some water. Now, I don't get excited about seeing a freaking buffalo. Yeah. i got neighbors that have buffaloes they've pinned in, so I can see them all the time. But there was a coyote standing on the side of the road like 20 yards away just kind of walking from car to car. I thought that was pretty impressive. And I told Michelle, I said, these fucking animals here are not used to getting shot at. You can tell. Mm-hmm. But then we drove and drove and drove and drove and drove, and I never did see a freaking bear in there. But people love fucking buffaloes, and that just shocked the shit out of me. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the staple of Yellowstone. They're everywhere. I don't think the bears were down low enough yet when and they we were had there, the, honestly. The road that was, they were fixing a road that went to went over a big p- pass there that was like 10,000 feet, and it was you couldn't get across it because they were redoing it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to Yellowstone in another yeah. year or two. There's a lot of stuff I didn't see there. They said it wasn't crowded yep. when we were there, and it wasn't. We didn't have to wait but about five minutes to get through the line to get in. And they were talking about sometimes it's an hour or two just to get into the park. And it just, I just, I can't believe there's that many fucking yep. tourists there. Oh, it's crazy, man. I mean, it, you'll have those days where – during the weekends like we never go on the weekends we've taken the kids there three or four times now we always go like on a tuesday in the morning and there's nobody there um but yeah those weekend days you'll stop especially if somebody stopped to look at an animal and there's there could be two three hundred cars in a line yeah, looking at a damn buffalo through. yeah i couldn't believe it yeah and even worse, when, those, when those herds of buffalo try and go over a road like over a pass there'll be a hundred buffalo walking down the road at their own pace you know and there's 75 cars well behind i got behind the buffaloes faster. doing that and i grew up in west texas and when you get cattle in the fucking road you honk at them and shit 
So I'm trying to honk and bump them in the ass, and you could tell the people around there did not appreciate that very much. <laughs> here it yeah, is, like not. this serene place. It's just nature and all of its glory. And then here's some asshole from Texas just fucking laying on the horn trying to get a buffalo out of the road. There's a freaking buffalo. It's just nothing but a prairie Some people cow. hadn't seen it. Well, that, there was a, there was a shitload of them to see there. I can tell you that much. The wolves are everywhere. There's there, a lot. Aren't they? I didn't see a wolf either. And I wasn't looking for a wolf, but I was looking for a bear or a moose. Ted, are the wolves there? There's a lot of wolves. I have never personally seen one, but I know of a lot of photographers that are in there that get some now, pretty epic shots. Around uh, Old Faithful and all the geysers, in the winter time, are, is there a mm -hmm. lot of game that come there because it's open water around there, or do they not drink that water? That's a good question. I think that water's the pH of that water is kind of funky. I don't know if they, I don't think they hole up around those geysers. To be honest, but I don't. I actually you, don't you know the, the Indians that, back yeah. in the day, and I'm talking about way, way before white man was ever here. I'm talking about the 1100s and 1200s, whenever we started having Plains Indians, and I don't know when the hell that was exactly. But you know, when they walked through that valley the first time, that was some some really weird medicine for them to see those geysers like that, especially at winter time. Yeah, it's crazy. They're beautiful in the winter. So, um, are you? The, the pictures that you've taken from this past season, like are you still going through them bit by bit, or are you pretty well done with anything waterfowl related? I'm done with that stuff. It's all cataloged. And then they and just pick it at their leisure or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like when I do trips for Quack Rack. I mean, that goes into its own bucket, and then I run their social media also, so I pick from my own for that. Um, but, yeah, I mean – a lot of it's available. I've been sold a couple to Yeti in the last couple months. Um, got the wildfowl cover two months ago. I think I got the next mm -hmm. one too. The wildfowl oh, picking which, up a bunch. Which one is it? Duck is it on? Is it on your Instagram? Uh, picture of the boat. Let me see. If, let me see if I can't find it. On real the quick. cover. So it was. Uh, you got it last month, and you think you're going to get it next month? That's that's big. Yep. That's that's good shit right there. Is that is that your first time? Yep. Uh, that'll be my third wild cow cover. That's a, that's that's. Uh, are you always kind of shocked whenever they say, "Hey, we want to use your picture"? Ah, it's just cool, man. You I mean you work hard and you take take all these photos. It's cool that somebody wants to use it, especially on the cover. I mean, it's kind of now. It's I'm an honor, ask really. Everybody else in America. Is Wanting to know, does that pay much when you get a cover spot spot like that? Um, it's decent. It's not anything to jump up in circles about, but you get enough. That's of a Wyman men's answer your bills. right there. <laughs> I never can get Wyman to give me a straight answer on that either. I don't. <laughs> no, it's good. It's certainly helpful to the financial situation. I'm, try I'm trying to. Do find you just a submit them a bunch of pictures? pictures? Is that how you do it? Yep, they have their own bucket to pick through. I'm trying to find this picture. This what other there. magazines do you send to? Uh, I got the cover of Pheasants Forever about four months, three months ago, I guess. Um, so they have a bucket. Do you? Um, now, that's really do it. Do they honestly. pay you for any time they put your picture in a magazine? Also. So yep. you just you see, you go and you see pictures and you thought, oh, that looks really good, and I'll send them to Wildfowl, and then you send them to DU, Pheasants Forever, and whatever, and then they'll just email you and say, hey, we're going to use this picture so, here. So that that's a, is that how kind of how that works? Yep. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They'll uh, I mean they'll have a bucket of like low res photos to look at, and they'll approve one and just reach out over email and say we need the high res of this one, and here's your rate. And, I miss, getting, I miss getting a DU magazine. Yeah. I used to look at them all the time just for the pictures alone, and I haven't seen a DU magazine, I bet, in five years. Now, do you – will you send these companies, like, the same picture and, and it's just the first first person to take it or what? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of crossover in the buckets of photos, but, you know, it's all – it can all apply to everybody, you know. So there's a certain crop of photos that's available that's not owned by, say – you know, Garrett at Quack Rack or Sitka or Yeti and, um, you know, stuff you shoot around here when right. you're just buddy hunting. And 
So yeah, I farm all that stuff out as right. much as I can. So, but much what I'm can. getting at is once, once like say Sitka buys a picture that you also sent to DU, do you have to, you have to go yeah. pull it. That's what go, I was asking. Let's... Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um, gee, so like you got to, you're constantly like in and out and trying to figure out who bought what and all that stuff. Yeah, I've developed a pretty good system now. It was pretty painful in the beginning trying to keep all that shit straight, but I can't imagine. Um, it's all relatively organized now. I mean, you'd have to be. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you hate to have an eight to five Monday through Friday job? Yeah, I don't know if I could do it. I know I couldn't do it. For I know for sure I couldn't do it. I have one schedule a week. I've I've court on Tuesdays. And I work my whole week around just one freaking day. I can't imagine Monday through Friday me having to be somewhere. I mean, I come to work every day, but I work for myself. It's not the same as going to work. It's not like I go to work. But that guy that I know that works 8 to 5 Monday through Friday for 30 years straight, I'm thinking, boy, that sucks. And so many people do that. I just, boy, that would drive me nuts. I know a lot of our listeners are people that are self-employed and do their own thing. And with that, you get a lot of freedom. And, and you're very fortunate for that and very blessed. Did we lose you again? We might have. We did. Um, you know, when when uh, when Jesse and I first got married, she was working. When my wife and I first got married, she was working seven thirty to five. She had an hour lunch, and like now she she's kind of built her own business to where she, she gets can, freedom. She can work around her own schedule. I don't know how we did it. I mean, and, and, you know, we didn't have kids at the first, but, you know, I don't know how people do it. They work 7.30 to 5. They have to cook. They have to cook for their family whenever they get home. They try to work out and stay in shape. I mean, I do not – I don't know how they run that rat race and get everything done. Heaven forbid you got to go to a t-ball game or a baseball game or a football game, soccer. People are so busy. And I mean, we're very fortunate here to kind of be able to make our own schedule. Now, you, now your wife works. So she's a she's a nurse, right? Yep, she's a labor and delivery nurse. So she works. Uh, she's a night shift nurse. So she works three Does nights. Do you ever a week. get frustrated with you with your for your freedom of doing what you want when you want to do it, or setting your time how you want to do it? No, no, because she's very well taken care of. I cook, I clean, I do all the shit. Hey, you, you just ruined really. it for every other man out there that's <laughs> not doing all that shit. <laughs> but I mean, I enjoy doing it, man. Like, the time is such a blessing. Like my kids and I are so close. Like my son and I, we hang out all day, every day now that he's out of school. So, you know, I got him in golf camp. I got him in all kinds of fun shit to do for the summer and, and stuff we like to do together, you know. And so I wouldn't trade it for the world being, you know, I wasn't, I grew up with two parents that worked their asses off and I hardly ever right. saw my dad college football coach he was gone in the morning he was gone at night you know busy 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 and so for me to be able to do this is a huge blessing yeah that's that's a very fortunate very very nice deal well and i mean that's what this country we we looked at it just a couple podcasts ago i mean the you know there's so many people that are being raised you know with no with no real guidance and the father figure is almost absent in america now so it's important to have guys like you out there you know showing the next generation of dudes how to be a dude your dad, did he coach at Montana State? Uh, no, he coached all over the place. He, I was born in Helena, just like 90 miles up the road, so he coached at Carroll College, which is a NAIA um, college there in Helena, and then he jumped around a couple times. Jamestown, North Dakota is where we moved, my first move, right before seventh grade. Um, and that's where I started waterfowl hunting when I was 12. Um, and then he did a couple seasons at Texas A&M Kingsville. Uh, and he just left. We stayed in North Dakota. He just went for the season and coached there. And then we came back to Northern Montana right before my senior year. One of the high greatest school. players in NFL history went to Texas A&M Kingsville. Daryl Green. Oh. I thought you were going to say, didn't uh, Dickhead go? No, he went to UTEP. Who's, Aaron Jones. Well, you called him a Dickhead. No, Daryl Green went to Texas A&M. We've got a guy that hunts with us. I think we're froze again. Can you hear us, Ted? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah, I got we had you. a guy that hunted with us, that uh, that hunts with us every year that went to Montana State. Uh, he played at OU, J.D. Quinn. I've heard the name. He, uh, he got hired on at a car lot and didn't work. Well, right. I wasn't going to air all his – he left OU. <laughs> And went to Montana State. He was, I think, he was All American at OU, even defensive tackle. 
He's a big old boy. They got a little bit of they got a little bit of trouble. But, but he he went to Montana State. That's why I was asking if your dad. I knew your dad coached college ball. I couldn't remember if he coached at Montana State or not. And he might. Yeah, he, he might have went lower. to Montana. I don't remember which one. He went to one of the two schools up there. Ted, I know you got a heart. I know you got to go uh, shoot pictures. I wish uh, wish we had a little bit more time with you, but we're right at bumping an hour, so we're gonna let you go. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your summer. It's gonna go by in a hurry, and then you're gonna be freezing your nutsack off, taking awesome pictures uh, all over again. So, congratulations on the on the wildfowl cover, and uh, keep kicking ass out there, bud. Yeah, thanks, guys. Right, I appreciate take it. those pictures. You have a good day, bud. God bless you. Yes, See you, sir. See ya. Ted Wells. Taking pictures, you know, it, the ways that you can make money in this in this world anymore are crazy. That's what you need to do. I mean, the, the, the nine to five is, you know. Capitalism. It's, it's not. It's not – you don't have to if you don't want to run that race. No, there's a lot of security with a 9-to-5 job. Sure, absolutely. For somebody else that we don't have that, but we're fortunate to do what we do, and we're very we're very blessed. you got to trade one or the other. Yep. You can either have security or you can have a little bit of freedom. And I'm so far now used to not having security that I'm used to it. <laughs> so it is what it is. But you, you you make what you can out of what you got. And I feel sorry. We got a lot of guys at work, and they bust their ass all the time. They're self-employed, and we got a lot of guys that work for other people. But everybody finds their own happiness. Yep. But I would have a hard time doing Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Because I've done this so long, I'm spoiled. Right. And Matt Reagan told me years and years and years ago, he said, the best part about being self, or self-employed or self is the freedom. And he goes, people don't realize that, that you give up some s- securities, but you get a lot of freedom that, when you work for somebody else, you don't have that. Mm-hmm. Even though you plan on going to your kid's Little League game, that doesn't mean the boss ain't going to say, hey, I need you to work late tonight. Right. You know, there's always that option that he could trump whatever you're going to do. So That's exactly right. All right, everybody, come by Squad Fest. This is going to come out on Friday, I'm assuming, probably. Yeah. It's on Friday, so we will be at Squad Fest when this comes out. Come by and see us. Get your <laughs> picture with the world-famous Andy Shaver. Get the, go to Pacific Game Calls, their booth. Get your T-shirt. Get it signed. And it'll get you in, and take a picture of it, put it on our Facebook page, our private one, the the Big Honker Podcast private group, and be in a drawing to win a goose hunt and a goose call from Pacific. <laughs> That's right. Lodging and meals on that goose hunt. Thank you very much. God bless y'all. Have a great day. Check out all of our sponsors. Check out Eyesight Drone Service. Check out Bangtail Whiskey, Pacific Calls, Dive Bomb Industries, uh, Dirty Duck Coffee, Lucky Duck. Looking Glass Duck Club, Stanfield Hunting Outfitters, Goose Creek Retrievers, and Gundog Outdoors.